Well, good evening. And I can't, I don't think I can call it finance after dark because I don't think it's dark out yet. So finance after a full day. How about that? Good evening, everybody. I would like to call our Senate finance meeting to order. And would the committee secretary please call the roll? Senator Canizaro. Senator Gorkichia. Senator Harris. Here. Senator Neal. Here. Senator Wynn. Here. Senator Severs Gansert. Here. Senator Titus. Here. Chair Don Darrow Loop. Here. Thank you very much. And please mark uh, Senator Canizaro uh, present when she arrives. So this evening we have one bill on the agenda uh, for the hearing. Assembly Bill 268 makes an appropriation for the payment of retention incentives to certain employees of state government. Here to present the bill is Chief of Staff uh, Keefer and um, Amy Stevenson, our GFO. So please go ahead when you're ready. And when you are finished um, acting, uh, Chancellor Urquiaga is going to follow. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, for the record, my name is Ben Kiekeffer. I have the honor of serving as Chief of Staff to Governor Joe Lombardo, and it is a pleasure to be back in the Senate Finance Committee. Thank you for scheduling a hearing for us tonight. <laughs> and um, <laughs> We wouldn't do it without you. <laughs> uh, um, here to present Assembly Bill 268. Uh, during um, the Governor's State of the State, uh, he made a commitment to um, doing better by our state employees. And Assembly Bill 268 is going to be the first measure that you see um, before you this session that um, is trying to make good on the governor's promise. Um, he proposed um, during that state of the state and in his budget um, a, uh, an intention, uh, a retention incentive um, payment for state employees totaling $2,000 per year for every employee um, as um, a sign of um, our appreciation for the work that they've done during the pandemic for sticking with us and for continuing their work as state employees and hopefully um, showing that uh, we value them, the work that, that they do, and that we want them to stay with us going into the future. Um, we prioritized um, these payments as a component of our one-time um, cash on hand. So this is a, um, an appropriation out of the current fiscal year. Um, as it's proposed in the budget for the next biennium, as well as an acceleration of those payments um, into the current fiscal year, uh, which is the measure that you see uh, before you today. So Assembly Bill 268 um, in Section 1 appropriates $20,970,000 out of the state general fund to provide two um, um, retention incentive payments to uh, state employees um, in quarterly installments. Um, the, the employees would qualify if they're working um, at the end of March for a Q3 um, incentive and um, at the end of June, June 16th, for uh, the Q4 payment. Um, those um, payments would be incorporated into regularly scheduled paychecks um, through the state personnel system um, and uh, would be incorporated into those um, into those biweekly um, checks for state employees. Um, so uh, all employees would receive those payments regardless of um, their salary, uh, which provides um, an enhanced um, benefit to those employees at the lower end of our salary schedules. Um, the average wage for um, the 16,597 state employees who are um, currently in the system when, when we land, ran the report uh, was $29.62. And if you take this incentive payment annualized, um, that would be, um, that would equate to a 3.2% um, incentive payment for them. So it's not un inconsequential. And if you um, look at the band of, of payments for our employees, of those um, 16,597 uh, employees, more than 5,000 of them earn less than $50,000 a year. And for those employees, um, anyone making less than um, $50,000 would be a minimum of a 4% um, incentive for them. So it's not inconsequential when um, compounded with um, the proposed COLAs of 8% and 4% over the next biennium that the governor's included in his budget. Um, during the transition, when we were meeting with all department heads, um, st vacancies and state positions was um, the, the most significant concern that was voiced to us. Um, 
is not insignificant. Um, and the last statewide vacancy report that was run on March 3rd, um, statewide across all departments, the state was experiencing a 21% vacancy rate across all state departments. Um, this is an effort to address that, um, to ensure that uh, we don't lose m more valuable state employees and that we are able to um, um, hire more to fill that rate um, as we move into the next biennium. The, uh, uh, I could keep talking, but I think I'll stop and open it up for any questions you may have unless Ms. Stevenson wanted to add anything. She's shaking her head no, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, committee questions. Uh, Senator Titus, please. Uh, I thank you, Madam Chair, for the question, and thank you, sir, for being here. I continually, I have gotten many, many, many text messages, emails, phone calls regarding this bill and how it was passed out and amended on the assembly side. Um, we sit here with a proposed amendment. I'm not sure. I guess it's presented by the Nevada Faculty Alliance. Um, is there an opportunity to discuss that, Madam Chair? So would that be all right? You if may I... ask that question. Great. Thank you. So um, um, Mr. Senator, Chief of Staff, Keith Keffer, um, honorable sir um can you would you <laughs> wait a minute go on down the road father <laughs> would you c would you give me some background um on and thank you for when i did reach out you did reply and thank you Ms. stevenson for replying to how we got here to yet another amendment putting these folks back in conceptually i i just need to know log logistics here sure thank you uh ben key for the record madam chair um, through to Senator Titus. So the way that uh, we originally um, submitted AB 268 and, w and the way we originally budgeted for it was to include all executive branch state employees as well as state-funded positions in the Nevada system of higher education. That would have included both um, um, uh, classified staff and professional faculty. Um, when we were uh, presenting the bill, the, the bill to Assembly Ways and Means Committee, there was some um, disagreement over the calculation methodology, I believe, um, including and, and whether the um, the budgetary number included in the bill um, was sufficient to cover uh, the the sort of full gamut of of employees as it was presented. So um, there was quite a bit of back and forth during the committee hearing over who was included and who was not included. Um, our intent was to include professional faculty within NG. So um, I stated that when I presented the bill in the assembly, I stated again here, um, they were carved out in the amendment that was attached to the bill and is now included in the first reprint. Um, and I believe that the amendment that you're referring to, which is not submitted by us, but we are not averse to, um, uh, would incorporate some changes that would, um, that would refocus uh, or, or re would add them back in. Um, I would want the opportunity to weigh in on some of the mechanics of, of how um, that amendment could would, would have to operate when implementing it through a, the state employee system. I know that some people would be in, some people would be out based on salary bans and things like that. Um, it's, it's not a um, solution that we're necessarily averse to. I just have to understand and work with our personnel system as to whether that would be functional um, from an implementation standpoint. I don't know if the system works like that, that it would be easy to add the incentive to everybody but X, so to speak, um, within our system. So, um, you know, look, our intent was to include professional faculty. They were carved out based on, um, I think, what was a, um, some, some variance in interpretation of um, positions versus FTE versus the vacancy rate that was applied when calculating it. Um, so we have no objection to uh, including professional faculty back into the bill. Uh, thank you for that uh, clarification. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the question. Thank you very much. Question, um, Senator Canizaro. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. So this brings me to my point because I think the issue that we've been dealing with is how much money had been originally allocated um, from governor's office for retention bonuses. And we're talking about retention bonuses that would apply for the remainder of this fiscal year, there's also some consideration of retention bonuses that may 
become part of a conversation for um, the rest of the biennium. Um, how much money is it then that you all have calculated what it would cost to have included all of those employees? Since that seems to be where we're having some differences. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Chair Ben Keekover, for the record. So the bill, as it was originally presented, included $23 million in appropriation. Um, and as the um, as the amendment came in, it was reduced to the number that's that's now in the bill. Um, the yeah, I'm gonna I'll turn it over to Ms. Um, Stevenson to talk about what was I, I believe we included 20 million dollars in the one shot appropriation for it. We added in the three million in the bill itself as an, as the appropriation to accommodate for payroll taxes that we have to pay that was um, inadvertently omitted. So um, that was, I, I believe, the additional amount that was included, but I will um, defer to Ms. Stevenson in terms of what it would calculate out to for a subsequent biennium. I don't know how this is great. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, through you to Senator Canizero. So the, um, I just wanted to make sure I clarify that, oh, sorry. Amy Stevenson for the, it's, it's Senate Finance After Dark. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, Amy Stevenson for the record. Um, so when we submitted the original, or when the governor recommended budget came over, when we submitted the original one shot, um, when we calculated um, employees, we um, it, we assume or we had the total of about twenty million dollars. When we went back to talk to our payroll, actually people they're saying well, what about payroll taxes at the 1.45? So when we got it from LCB Legal, we added the $3 million. That was to include only um, executive branch and then NG staff and professional state-supported. Um, based off of numbers that we, we pulled at a, at a moment in time. Um, then we worked with, um, during the assembly, um, when this was heard in the assembly, we worked with staff to come up to the numbers that they have now. So we would have to calculate um, adding professionals back in what that would what that would cost. Did that answer? I think that the the question is now I think a little more convoluted because twenty million for executive um, plus three million for taxes and including all and she professional staff. What? The calculations are that we have before us today are little more than twenty million, um, so I'm a little. I'm trying to figure out where the money is to pay for that additional amount, and I will caveat that with this: the amendment that was submitted to us, um, which you all have said you're not averse to, from the Nevada Faculty Alliance, is tagging the individuals within NCHI that would be subject to receiving this bonus at 95% of the salary of the governor. So it's not including all professional staff. It's including a small portion of that and is estimated a little more than $3 million to cover those. So I'm having trouble figuring out how with $20 million in a one shot, we're including all professional staff plus all executive that's included in this bill and I understand that there's an additional for the legislative and obviously for purse, but those are very small amounts. Um, and if we're talking about including all NCHI professional staff, even part of that, that we're basing this on that, the tagging to this, the 95% of the governor's salary <coughs> is more than 3 million. So I'm trying to make the numbers make sense and figure out where that money was included that would have actually covered all of those NG professional. Thank you. Um, ben Keekover for the record. So our um, our original calculation included um, 28,000 employees and um, it incorporated a vacancy rate of 20%. So we, it was budgeted at 22,400 total um, personnel. And then um, that um, we multiplied that um, by the thousand dollars for the two payments um, that got us to the um, when you incorporated back in the tax it was twenty two million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that we 
rounded up to 23 to be safe. Part of the change, I believe, that was made in the amendment when it came to the budgetary amount was adjusting the vacancy factor from 20 percent, which is um, what we calculated to 10 percent, um, which um, adjusted the total appropriation need to meet the personnel number. I feel like I might be more confused at this point. That was not so, my intent. <laughs> so the number of personnel multiplied by what we are doing in terms of an incentive of that of a thousand dollars here is at 20 is a little more than or is almost 23 million but, when we're t but earlier the testimony was that there was three million added to the 20 million one shot to pay for payroll taxes but now it seems as though that number was actually closer to 23 to begin with so am I am I misunderstanding something or well it was we, we believe that it was I'm sorry Ben key cover for the record we believe that it was 23 million to begin with, and that in, that included professional employees at NSHE. But the okay, so here's my here's my question because the because the one shot was for 20 million, so 20 million right. to cover all of these employees plus three million for payroll taxes. So is it 23 million to cover all employees plus we have to pay payroll taxes, or 20 million in a one shot? And three million for the taxes. It was Ben Keeker for, ben Keeker for the record. Sorry. So we had budgeted twenty million in the one shot that was sent over as a party governor's request. Um, that that one shot request is um, three million dollars short of what would be needed to fund this bill, and that's why we put the appropriation specifically into the bill to add the additional money. I guess where I am just I am struggling is that with the one shot money, there just does not even seem to be enough to cover. The, the the employee populations that we're talking about and so that's I think my concern I, I still think I'm a, a little unclear on how that all works out and I know that I know that you mentioned that there was some differences of calculations but I am I am very much struggling with where it is that all this money is to cover these additional employees because it doesn't seem to be it does not seem to exist in the one shot thank uh, Ben Kiko for the record so as uh, if I didn't state it clearly I'll try to state it more clearly this time um, we, we budgeted 20 million dollars in the one shot request that was sent over as a part of GovRec it was probably three million dollars light for what was necessary to fund this bill so we appropriated the um, or we, we added the three million dollars to the total appropriation request which is um, three million dollars more than what was in the bun which was in the one shot so if you think it's three million dollars light that's that's accurate um, and we believe that the excuse me that the revenue is there to cover that so you wouldn't be appropriating money that we don't have if you pass the bill I guess in answer to your question okay so let me ask one more question in hopes that I can clarify this the 23 million is what covers the amount for all of these employees not 20 million for the employees and 3 million for your taxes because that's what was testified to was that 3 million was needed to help cover payroll taxes correct so it's still 20 million to cover all these employees which is where i'm struggling because the bill it, only has a little more than 20 million so is the 3 million to help cover the costs for paying these retention bonuses or is the three million to cover the costs for the payroll taxes the the thank you cover for the record the three million was added um, in the original draft of um, ab 268 to cover the payroll taxes okay so before i go to senator gansert i'm just going to simplify so if you have 28 100 employees and it's a thousand dollars times 2800 that's not 20 that's not a 20. <laughs> right so, um yeah ben key cover for the record so you we subtract out um five thousand six hundred dollars um to count which is 20 percent of the total appropriation amount basically to cover the vacancy rate because we don't we're not going to appropriate money that um 
thousand four employees that don't exist, right? So right. Sure. These are sure. All right. I'll let Senator Gansard ask her questions, then we'll go on. Um, thank you. Now, now you've got me caught up in the math. So, if you have twenty eight thousand people and you have an eighty percent or twenty percent vacancy rate, you have eighty percent of that, which is twenty two thousand four hundred times a thousand is twenty two point four million dollars. Do you need twenty two point four million dollars plus another three million to cover your taxes? So because the, the raw number thousand right. with eighty percent is twenty two four. Right. Plus, when you incorporate the payroll tax amount, it gets you to twenty two million seven hundred fifty thousand. So we were. So you're, so you weren't the, off three so million. So I was. So I, I stand corrected. Right. I was, I was. I was off. Right. Slightly in terms of the three million that I was just speaking about with the majority leader. Um, that it was um, that in, it, that it covered both the taxes and the. Um, and a um, a full accounting of the need to cover the state employees. So, do we agree that the twenty two thousand twenty two million four hundred thousand dollars covers the a thousand dollars, right? Okay, and then yes. the taxes are those another three million? No, they're not another three million. You have them down as like three hundred fifty thousand, but that doesn't sound right. I think there's a digit. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm thinking, yeah, but, but you know, uh, thank you th through you, Madam Chair, to uh, Senator Gansert, uh, Amy Stevenson, for the record. So uh, the payroll tax is 1.45 percent. So out of the 22 million 400, the, the taxes would be 324 800. 324. Okay. So. Thank you. So you need uh, twenty-two million, about seven hundred fifty thousand, is which is what Mr. Keefer said, Chief Keefer said. So I think that makes sense because the, you don't pay it like a normal employer because we don't have Social Security and so forth. So my original question that I now we can follow up on if we all have the numbers right. Are we good with the numbers? Okay. Now, um, is uh, none of Senator Gansert? Let's let uh, uh, Mr. Keefer, whatever your title is. I want to call you Senator. Um, Chief of Staff Key Keffer, repeat those numbers again. Yeah, if you want to repeat the numbers, then I'll ask my other question. Okay, thank you. So the um, 28, we, we budgeted at 28,000 employees, which we believed covered the executive branch state employees, classified employees of NSHE, and state funded professional employees of NSHE, right? Um, and we it, um, factored in a 20% vacancy rate, which took us to 22,400 employees at um, a $1,000 cost for the rest, for the two quarters of this fiscal year, taking you to 22,400,000 dollars multiplied by um, the 1.45% payroll tax that we're obligated for, which would get us to 22,750,000, and we included 23 million in the bill to fund it. Thank you. My other question was, and it's probably obvious, is there's there's no uh, uh, these funds are not eligible for PERS, correct? So this does not add to the PERS. That's correct. Thank you, Governor. That is correct. Any and, additional Chair. questions? If I may, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. And I, and I just want to point out again that that was in what was in. The original draft of the bill, that's not what is in calculated in the first reprint. Okay. Um, thank you. So that was what the, the 23 million, or roughly 22,750 you were talking about, included all those employees, but the, the draft excludes some employees um, who are non classified. I'll wait a second. So, Madam Chair, just the, the follow-up. So that, that covered the, their original estimate. But the bill that we have before us was amended to take out uh, non-classified staff at Nishi and, and Lai. I, like uh, 
Senator Titus have gotten a lot of emails about that, cutting a, a group of employees out of this retention uh, incentive plan. And I know we have a, an amendment before us, but uh, anyway, I just want to let you know that I had a lot of incoming on that as well, differentiating between different members um, of, at the same institution. Institutions, thank you. This is a little bit of a math lesson, so hang on. Uh, Senator Gorkachia. Thank you, and I'm really struggling with my cowboy math here. So anyway, the bill we've got before us from the Assembly, 268, and, and the number there is $20,970,000. Okay, clearly that's incorrect. And that's, but that's the bill we're hearing. Uh, ben Keegover, for the record. Um, the bill before you that includes the $20,970,000 does not include um, professional employees at the system of higher education, which I believe is about 4,100 um, employees. It also um, uses a different vacancy rate factor to calculate the dollar figure. So I can't walk you through the step-by-step -step on, on, on that dollar figure as it was calculated um, by LCB to come up with that number. Um, but... Um, it is it so it has two differences from the math I just walked you through one is the um, exemption of the professional employees and the other is the is half of the vacancy factor and as I look at the amendment that has been the conceptual has been offered you know again we've got nearly a four million dollar difference and, and I, I know I, it's I, not I, fair to ask no. you to to address the, yeah. the conceptual but yeah, Ben Keegan, for the record, I just I don't have the amendment in front of me. It may very, it may very right. well be. No, thank you. We'll thank wait you. until we get to that point. But uh, but at this point, uh, twenty million nine nine hundred seventy thousand is accurate. Ben Keegan, for the record, it's it's accurate from what I understand for what is in the bill. Okay. Um, if if our intent is to include professional faculty of NSHE, it would be in, it would be insufficient to cover um, that uh, uh, those employees. And that is your intent, correct? That was our intent in the original bill. Okay. All right. So we need to adjust the numbers. Thank you. Uh, Senator Wynn. Okay. So I have a question because we just talked about twenty two, the twenty two seven fifty. Was that the original amount requested. Uh, ben Keegan, for the record. Um, so, Senator, we submitted in the governor's recommended budget um, a $20 million one-shot appropriation. Um, when we recognized that we needed to increase that to cover the, um, um, the number of the, all of the employees we were intending to include, we increased that to a $23 million appropriation in um, the bill itself. So um, when you say original, I want to make sure I'm clear. We um, put $20 million in the budget as a one-shot, and um, we requested 23 in the legislation. Okay. So the $20 million one-shot, you intended to cover – all of the employees, including the professionals that are now no longer included in that as it came over here. Is that correct? We intended doing, we, we believed when we submitted, right, that it was going to be sufficient to cover professional employees. Um, as we refined it, we wanted to make sure that we were actually requesting enough money to do so. So we increased that by $3 million in the legislation. That was then amended down um, as a part of the amendment that was processed in the assembly. Because they were trying to stay within the $20 million one-shot that was a part of the original like request. They didn't state their intent as to whether it was to, um, whether it was a financial or policy decision. So I'm not going to put words into their mouth. And then if we're looking at this uh, conceptual amendment presented by the Nevada Faculty Alliance, they have an even different number, which is potentially $24,816,000. But under your calculations, it should be that 20, $23,000,000 should cover everything. So their math is wrong or your math is wrong? 
Ben Kiko, for the record, I think we're calculating sorry. Forgive different me things. if we. No, I, I think we're, I think we're calculating different things, right? Okay. Because they've um, they've tried to salary band those who would be eligible for um, the retention incentives based on capping it at ninety five percent of the governor's salary. There are um, professional employees on um, within the system that would be outside of that. There would be some em employees in the executive branch, physicians and others, who would be outside of that. So um, the calculate we're, we're calculating different numbers. Okay. Uh, Senator Canizero. Like, how are you? Going to try to ask a few more questions here. So, the, so, okay. So, the amendment that was adopted on the assembly side from the original bill. Obviously, include it, it, it takes out some individuals, right, and and drops that from twenty three million to twenty million nine hundred and seventy. Twenty three million to include the professional staff at Enshi, I guess. And I know that this amendment is not yours, so I understand that maybe you're calculating different numbers. But I think that there seems to be an issue with what even that twenty three million would cover. Because what we're looking at from this amendment that was that was submitted, and I know you said you're not averse to it, is that even with not all the professional staff, it's still over three million additional to include those just a portion of those professional staff. And I think that's where we're struggling because 23 million doesn't seem like it's gonna cover all of that. Um, I know that this, I know that this particular amendment also included things like the legis legislative staff, um, per staff. Those are both in different sections of this bill, right? Not part of that 20 million. Um, also included judicial staff, that's about 200, 276 thousand so it's not the three million the three million or a substantial portion of that and so I'm struggling to again I think that there seems to be that there is not enough money even in the original version of the bill to cover all of those professional staff even based on what's being submitted to us from the, those staff Ben Kikoffer, for the record, Madam Chair, um, I think what we're we're all struggling with is um, an understanding of what all the assumptions are that have been built into now I think three different entities' calculations of what the number should be. Um, I don't exactly know how the um, Nevada Faculty Alliance calculated their numbers. They'll come up and they'll present them, I'm sure, and um, whether they included a vacancy rate, um, how they determined, you know, how many people are above the 95% um, cap, so the total number that's going to be included in that. I just can't speak to that. My, my information from the system was that roughly 4,100 um, professionals were, um, were, were cut out of it when the amendment was adopted. But then, as you note, um, there were additional groups of... Um, state employees added back in. Um, so there's three different, potentially four different folks doing um, the math on it. And so it's probably no big surprise that there's some disagreement over what the numbers might be. Um, and I, so I, I can't speak to how I, either LCB at this point or the Faculty Alliance has calculated their, um, their, their financial component. And, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I think the other thing at least my understanding is um, having had conversations with our colleagues mm -hmm. is that this amendment from the assembly was agreed to by your office. Yeah, well, uh, Ben Keith for the record. Um, they, uh, we received a, um, a mock-up amendment and um, we're working on a deadline to try to get this incentive paid for state employees. Um, and it continued to um, to target the um, um, it included to support the executive branch state employees that we were um, focused on most prominently and through the give and take of legislative process we decided to accept the Assembly Ways and Means Committee amendment as presented to us. 
knowing that it was carving out people that we were intending to include. Which feels like not an agreement. I mean, I obviously understand the legislative process, but this is this seems to be a numbers issue more so than anything else. That there does not seem to be enough, even in the twenty three million, and I understand that like the faculty alliance is working on different numbers. Like we have numbers, obviously, there's always work between L C B fiscal staff, governor's finance office, in order to come up with, you know, what things cost so that we can budget appropriately. But that is a process that that happens in every budget that's submitted in, in GovRec. It happens in every bill that has an appropriation in it. So that is not a unique process and this seems to be a numbers issue, which is which is I think what we're trying to get at the heart of, at the heart of. And it's not as though the faculty alliance is like somehow within some some sense and I, I know the vacancy savings and they may have a different number, but we're it feels like we're not even operating in the same ballpark if they're if they're coming up with a very small percentage of folks who are gonna qualify for this from the professional staff and coming up with an even bigger number than what we have from you all and then an amendment that comes from the assembly that is then agreed to and now it's like, well, that's not really what we wanted to do is just very hard to try to discern all of this and figure out what is the actual number, how much is this going to cost, um, and what the intent is when putting forth a one shot and saying this is what this is going to, this is what we believe is going to cover this, right? Because we have to, if we're going to approve bills like this, we have to be able to have a number yes. to approve. Um, and so to me, it seems as though there was not enough money to do this because it's not adding up in some even it, it feels very off um, thank you for the record madam chair uh, to the majority leader Look, i don't think we're that far off um, and i don't think that the number of um, employees that would be the and she professional employees who would be added through their amendment is insignificant i think it's the majority of them um, it, in terms of the um, information that had been presented to me um, by them a couple of days ago. So um, I think that if we were to look at what's being proposed potentially for Menchie, um, the amendments that um, were incorporated um, on the assembly side um, that added additional people to the mix, um, then we're probably not as far off as we think. And if we all sat down in a room, we could probably hash it out pretty quickly. Um, and thank you, Madam Chair. And if I if I may just add one comment, because I, I do want to be very clear here. I don't think anyone in this building doesn't recognize that there are very good employees at ENCHI that are doing great work. I am a product of the Nevada system of higher education in every race, shape, and form. And I can tell you that I have experienced that um, personally. Um, I know that there are good folks. And I don't think anybody's intention is to say that some, some people shouldn't deserve a retention bonus or don't deserve a retention bonus or should or shouldn't be there. But when we are budgeting, we just have to be able to say this is how much money it is and this is what we can afford. That is our job, certainly in this committee, that is our job as a legislative body. Um, and so to have accurate numbers, I think, is important. But I just I do want to state that just because we are having a discussion about numbers and trying to make decisions about what we can and cannot afford and what is submitted to us, making sure that that is verifiable is something that we have to do as a body and it is not... Um, it is not meant and shouldn't be taken as somehow an affront to the hardworking and she professionals at every level um, and at every institution here in the state because I think they do provide a valuable service. So thank you for allowing me the indulgence for questions and to, to editorialize a bit. Madam Chair, if I may. Um, Go ahead, please. Thank you. And, and certainly appreciate the comment and, and fully understand. And, and, and we believe that um, the desire to take care of state employees is a is a shared priority of the governor and the legislature, and we don't we don't discount that. And Madam Chair, we would um, again, Ben Kiefer, for the record, we would be more than happy to um, to sit down with um, your fiscal staff, with Enchi's fiscal staff, and come to numbers that we all agree on um, that we can afford that um, we think would um, fit the bill. Uh, any additional questions?
Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, just, Senator Titus. So, so can we just have it for, for myself and I think members here, uh, I need, I appreciate the dialogue and the discussion and the moving numbers, the fluidity in these numbers depending on who presented them. One thing uh, I would need for clarity is to make sure that the, when you sit down and we work out the exact numbers, it would be to include the, the numbers that would include the ENSHI staff, both classified and unclassified. I, I would just want any numbers that come forward. So is it that commitment from this body that we, uh, I, I would like to commitment that whatever numbers, and I, I realize there's dis discrepancies and vacancies, et cetera, but whatever the real number is should include the NG, both classified and unclassified staff. Okay, all righty. Um, if you don't mind, I, I would like to call up the acting chancellor and uh, possibly give him a chance to give us a little more information um, before we close the hearing. Thank you. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Is it, it might be after dark by now. Pretty sure it is. Madam okay, Chair. sir. Um, for the record, Madam Chair, members of the Finance Committee, I'm Dale Urquiaga, and I serve as the Acting Chancellor. And if you think that Senator Gorkachi's cowboy math is bad, buckle up. Uh, <laughs> Are you going to do Basque math? <laughs> We're over the Basque okay. quotient in the room, ma'am. So I'm going to I'm going to try and add um, some clarity of what my numbers are. So first of all, let me begin by saying. A couple of things. I want to thank the governor um, for advancing this measure, uh, and I want to thank this body and the other body for its attention to state workers writ large, mine and all the others, um, who have uh, labored through the last few years and stuck with us. My vacancy rates, just so you know, are a slightly less than the state's. It's about 15 percent across my institution. That's still a big hole. Um, I have other means of filling that rate at my institutions with um, uh, part-time staff. So part of the burden here is all of my letters of appointment and part-time staff are not even being discussed today. We're talking about full-time staff in this bill. And that was made clear by the governor, I think, and in the other house. I'll also say, after saying thank you, uh, and thank you to those who have spoken about my faculty, um, I agree with you. The, the INSHI folks labored while I was not there. You all know I'm new. Um, our faculty and professional staff um, do a great job. They show up uh, for their students or for their program. Some don't um, teach every day, and they do an amazing job. So um, now I'll get to some numbers for you. Um, we have uh, sort of um, watched and have had conversations with leadership and committee chairs about this math. I think I got to the $23 million, um, counting a vacancy rate in a different way that the assembly did. And I think that probably would have covered my uh, faculty as well as my classified staff. Now that we've muddied all that so much, let me just give you the numbers. And these are real numbers um, drawn from our payroll system. I also want to say, the NFA amendment is not the INSHI amendment. They use some of the same math that we used. They use an idea that we had advanced to the chair in conversations uh, about capping it. But we did not bring you an amendment because I didn't want to have this math conversation that you all just went through. My commitment to the chair was that I would not do that, that I would come proud that my classified staff is included in this bill and that we would have this conversation. So here's my part of the conversation. There are 7,778 professional employees today in our system. 4,161 of them are state supported. You know well, better than I, we have self supporting funds, grant funds, gift funds, uh, and non state dollars that fund those other folks. So the universe is 4,161 to cover everybody. You also know that state law for many years has provided an exemption for INSHI employees at the, uh, to the cap 
that a state, no state employee can make more than uh, the governor's salary. I think the carve out is medical professionals and dental professionals in y'all's staff and INSHI employees in mine. And so we're all aware that certain INSHI employees, you're looking at one, make a lot more than the governor. So if I back that number out and take you to the governor's number, 95% of the governor's salary, it's anybody in my system who makes uh, more than $161,559. Now I have to add some things together. I'm gonna give you that's roughly 300. Andrew, uh, CFO Klinger can correct that number, but for Basque math, it's about 300 of us at INSHI who make more than that number. So let us say we're at 3,800. That's my folks who are paid equivalent to what state employees make. That's the big number to retain all of those folks and, and think about them in the same way. Whether that was in the original bill or not, I don't know. I got lost. But that's the number. We, we will sit down with you, as I have pledged to the chair in the hall. And yesterday, I chased her into an elevator. I apologize, ma'am. We'll work out that number with you to see uh, what's covered in your vacancy rate. My number is not a vacancy rate my number. That's a real number. If that number's too big, we can slice this a different way. If you get to anybody in my system who makes um, about 90,000 or less, it's 3,000 people. It's a $3 million figure to the majority leader who was asking about that number. Now, I don't want to leave out those additional employees who were between 90,000 and 161,000. Um, they work just as hard. I also recognize that they're more highly compensated than many Nevadans. And I understand the math around here, and I know how this building runs on dollars. So those are, that's my commitment to you. Those are my real numbers. Um, I will make CFO Klinger available to you because he will get it all right, and I have now exhausted as much math as I've had since Jimmy Carter was president of the United States. Um, but we will work with you because my folks deserve this, just as every state worker, as you know, many of whom I served with in the many years I sat in state government jobs. And so I think our folks all deserve this. Again, I commend you. I commend Governor Lombardo for this. I do think this is a reasonable number. Um, I also could offer to you... Um, Remember, we have all those state-supported folks. We're going to cover those people if you do this. Like, we'll find that money. So I'm not going to leave those people out. I'm asking you to cover the state people. And to make this easy so we don't have to tinker with that $20 million number that we've all been so confused about tonight, you could add a section to this bill, as was done for the judiciary, that says $3 million or $4 million or $3,842,000 is given to INSHI to appropriate. I'll work the math out. I'll pay the property tax out of my fringe account. Like, let's not punish folks over mathiness. Um, you could treat us in the way that the legislative and judicial um, appropriations were. So we're not messing with that number. Um, I think I'll stop talking, ma'am. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Uh, Senator Gansert. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. So if you were allocated a lump sum and you didn't use all that lump sum based on the criteria that they had to be full time, they had to be states funded, then the money that you didn't use would be reverted. It would, it would actually revert back. Would that be correct? That's correct. So, and, and when I looked at this bill, I think the reversion was in September, like September 30th um, of 2023. So the money goes back in the pool if they don't use all of it. It's not like you're going to get, if you, if you separate it out, you wouldn't be, have $3 million to use for any purpose. It would be very specific, and you'd have to meet the criteria. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Senator Ganser, um, through the chair to you. Uh, Senator Wynn. Can, can you repeat how many NCHI staff there are total? I know you got down to that 3,800. Sure. What was the total number again? Of professional staff? Uh, 7,000, uh, for the record, Dale Urquiaga, there are 7,778 professional staff in the NG system, full-time employees. Okay. That includes state-supported, 4,161, and not non-state dollars, whatever the difference between 7,778 7, and Heidi can probably do it on top of her head. Pardon me, Senator Ganser can probably do it off the top of her head. I can't. And then I guess this might be a question for the governor's staff again. Um, 
when they're in, you know, you had indicated that your intention was to include all of those individuals. Was your intention at the time when you submitted the initial $20 million one-shot request, was that including all 7,800 employees, or was that already the pared-down number minus the vacancy rates? Um, Madam Chair, if I may, Dale or Kiyaga, for the record, I'll, I'll take that question. It was the state-supported number. That, that what they had originally budgeted, which is 4,161. Plus classified employees. So I didn't give you those numbers because those are already in the bill. There are 1,700 classified employees that are on state supported dollars in my system. It's another three or 400 who are uh, probably on state, uh, non state dollars, which again we will cover. So those 1,700 are in this bill. But the 41 were um, taken out because of the mathiness in the other house. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you very much for that information. And we are going to uh, go to those in support. And uh, we will start here in Carson City. <clears throat> Go ahead, Secretary of State. You may start. Good evening, Chair Dondara Loop and members of the committee. For the record, I'm Cisco Aguilar, Secretary of State. I'm speaking in favor of AB 268. Our offices only work because of the people in them. The ability for the state of Nevada to adequately serve the people is only because of our incredibly hardworking staff. Like many other agencies, the Secretary of State's office is critically understaffed. Even though our office is one of the highest revenue generators, to the general fund. We still can't pay our employees the wages they deserve. AB 268 would be an amazing gesture to those employees who have stuck with us through thick and thin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Brady Easterling with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. Uh, AFSCME is in support of AB 268. We want to thank this committee uh, and also thank the Assembly uh, for their hard work on this. And we also want to thank the governor's folks uh, for bringing this bill. Uh, we appreciate and support these efforts to fill critical vacancies and to show state workers uh, that they're valued. So thanks again. Thank you very much. Go ahead, please. Uh, Richard Zemke, for the record. I'm a state employee of 13 years. I came to this state uh, many moons ago during some hard times and furloughs family and such, and I knew that we had to take a lot of sacrifices. I was willing to take that sacrifice, as my family. And uh, with uh, Chief of uh, Key Keffer, as well as a senator, I testified in front of you all before, and I'm testifying again. Uh, after 13 years, uh, I personally am at a better spot. Um, and um, I, I work to um, encourage other folks that I meet to come work for us as well, because it's a rewarding career. And I've found that a lot of them told me, you know what, I really, you know, I can make more money at Starbucks. And uh, it really kind of hits your heart when you uh, put your heart out there for the state of Nevada and all its um, citizens. And yet, um, I want to thank you guys for getting this to the table right here and now. And whatever you can do with the math, that's great. Um, and then whatever you can do to make it not so divisive, you know, where I can, uh, you know, kind of fight for table scraps. I mean, make it to where we can all feel proud. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for working all those years. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Paul Moratkin with the Vegas Chamber. The Chamber is in support of AB 268. We appreciate the governor for bringing this bill forward, and we recognize the workforce challenges that the state is facing in today's labor market. 
and the need to support today's workforce with these retention efforts and incentives. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Anyone else here in Carson City? We'll go down to Las Vegas. Anyone in support? BPS, um, do we have anybody on the line? If you would like to testify in support of SB 257, please press star 9 to take your place in the queue. This, this is AB 268. That's the bill number. My apologies. If you would like to testify in support of AB 268, please press star 9 to take your place in the queue. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Hello, my name is Lori Brown. I work in Elko, Nevada at the Nevada Youth Training Center in maintenance, and I am in support of AB 268, this bill today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else on the line, please? Caller ending in 386, you are unmuted and may begin. Caller, are you on the line? We're ready. Sorry, Chair, it looks like we have a few hands risen. Uh, caller with the last three of 130, you may proceed. Hi, this is uh, Carl Lackey. I'm with uh, Game Biologist with the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Uh, I've been around long enough to remember the longevity pay benefits uh, that were taken away several years ago. Those benefits help bridge the gap in pay between state employees and the private sector. And the retention bonuses proposed in AB 268 would go a long way in showing state workers they are valued as the longevity pay benefits used to do. Thank you, Senators, members of the Finance Committee, and members of the Assembly for your consideration. And thank you, Governor Lombardo, and your administration, especially uh, Mr. Kikafer, for your support. Thank you. Next caller, please. Hi, my name is Blaine Harper. I'm a staff research associate, too, in the NG system and a member of Ask Me Local 4041. I'm calling in in support of AB 268. These bonuses will go a long way, showing state workers that we're appreciated for the work we do to make our community stronger. We thank you, the members of the Senate Finance Committee, as well as members of the Assembly, for hearing and supporting this fellow. And we also thank the Lombardo administration for their support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Hi, my name is Janelle Woodward, and I'm a proud member of Ask Me Local 4041. I currently work for the Division of Emergency Management as the State Hazard Mitigation Officer. Of note, we are currently working the flood disaster from the recent storms and have been working many long hours. Sadly, in the course of my work for the state in this disaster, 
I spent the last week and a half looking for two civil engineers who are state employees to go out with our two preliminary damage assessment teams and was unable to find two people who were not already busy to work with us until Monday morning this week, about an hour before we left. The second person was found Tuesday about 30 minutes before we left to go out to one of our local counties for damage assessment. This is simply one example of the shortage of employees in the state system that is so important to notice. I wholeheartedly support AB 268. These two additional 500 retention bonuses would go a very long way in making state employees feel valued and want to remain state of Nevada employees serving the people of the state. Thank you, members of the Senate Finance Committee, for the opportunity to address you, as well as the Assembly Ways and Means Committee for supporting this bill. I also thank the Lombardo administration for their support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other callers on the line? Yes, Chair, one moment, please. Hello, everyone. My name is John Warren. I work at the Nevada State Library and Archives. Ask, I'm with the Ask Me Local 441. I am in support of AB 268. State of Nevada faces an enormous understaffing crisis, especially in our area. These bonuses would go a long way in showing state workers that we are appreciated for the work we do to make our community stronger. We thank you, the members of the Senate Finance Committee, as well as members of the Assembly for hearing and supporting this bill. We also thank the Lombardo administration for their support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Ending in Hello. Hello, good evening. My name is Gloria Charlene, mathematician and she admin faculty. Tonight I want to give my testimony to frame a picture of how only not only classified but all employees need every raise and incentive. In June 22, I was asked to write on behalf of myself and colleagues on my personal situation and how we did not make enough money to fully support our families. I wrote and submitted to my manager on how I had to go to the food banks and be able to provide meals for my daughter, rent, utilities, and gas was all raised in the last year. I had to ask for my daughter's sports fees to be waived as I could not pay, and I have to pay out of pocket for my medical expenses as our insurance does not cover my needs. We were all and still are seeing all types of employees continuously leaving and for higher paying jobs. Nothing was ever said to me even though I shared my personal hardships that many of us are facing. So my hardships continued, leaving me in December 22 to get my family blessingly sponsored by Catholic Charities for my daughter just to be able to have Christmas presents and using pack provisions and other food pantry still. Today I was shocked to read that entry employees are left out of the incentive. Just as easy as you took entry employees off, you can put entry employees back in and give the incentive for all. You cannot have classified nor NG employees wait any longer. As given to me by a colleague, the national average for my position is at least 20,000 more and 100% remote. Each turnover we have costs about 5,000, which is more than keeping employees, and we will have more than a 20% vacancy if we do not see increases and in incentives for classified and NG employees. Thank you, everybody, for your support and all the hard work you are doing. Thank you. Next caller, please. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, uh, members of the Senate Finance Committee. My name is Eric Marchand, M-A-R-C-H-A-N-D. I teach in the College of Engineering at UNR, where I've been an employee for about 23 years. Currently, I serve as faculty senate chair representing uh, the academic and administrative faculty on campus. However, I am providing testimony as a citizen and not offering a perspective as a UNR or NC employee, although I believe it is in line with what Acting Chancellor Urquiaga has um, already presented. As a faculty member, I teach undergraduate and graduate classes. Uh, as we all know, COVID was very challenging and we are still working through trying to get on the right track. I also conduct externally funded research where I support graduate students, undergraduate students, and research funding to the university that comes from non-state dollars. I also work on outreach in Nevada to support higher education. I have observed firsthand the challenge that higher education um, employees such as myself have faced as other state of Nevada employees have. We were very excited to hear Governor Lombardo's recommendations in the state of the state. We've heard about the potential restoration of the 12% budget cuts, COLAs of 8% and 4%, deferred maintenance funding to NCHI, $5 million to reevaluate the funding formula and the quarterly bonuses. Um, this focus on higher education and other state of Nevada um, priorities was, was very heartening to myself and my faculty. So I, along with my colleagues, were recently disappointed to find that NC had been carved out um, as part of AB 268. Um, however, the, the fact that our non, sorry, that our classified employees were included was a good thing. They deserve it, as do all state of Nevada employees. So I would call on members of the Senate Finance Committee to propose appropriate amendments to include NC professional staff. It is the right thing to do for equity to set an example that higher education employees are valued just as other state of Nevada employees are valued. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for your service. Have a good night. Thank you very much. And we are in support. So do we have anybody else on the line in support? Yes, Chair, one moment. Good evening, uh, Finance Committee. My name is Larry Coffey, and I work for uh, Voc Rehab with the Bureau of Services for the Blind and Visually Impaired. I'm an orientation and mobility instructor teaching our blind clients how to use the mobility cane and how to get around independently. Uh, I am a proud member of Ask Me Local 4041. I am in support of AB 268. Our agency has been hit extremely hard with vacancies. Uh, right now, there's only two of us in the state, in the lower, uh, southern half, and right now, I am the only one responsible for covering the southern half of Nevada for what I do. Uh, but our team has really felt it, and we're just starting to get some vacancies filled. So the as we face these enormous understaffing crises, these bonuses would go, definitely go a long way in showing us that... Uh, as workers that we are appreciated uh, for the work that we do and the and the difference that we make uh, in uh, building and, and making our communities stronger. Um, I would like also to thank uh, the members of the Senate Finance Committee as uh, well as the members of the Assembly for hearing and supporting this bill. Uh, we also thank the Lombardo administration for their support. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, Dondera Loop, and committee members. My name for the record is Terry Laird. I'm the Executive Director for ARPEN, the Retired Public Employees of Nevada. We're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization with nearly 8,000 dues paying members in 17 chapters statewide. And of those, 20, uh, some 2,000 are still active, members still working. We are here to support AB 268 and believe it should include all qualified state employees. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Uh, yes, good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Uh, for the record, my name is Deborah Hines, and I work with Adult Mental Health, and also a proud member of our Ask Me Local Union 4041. I am starting my 17th plus year with the same agency. Never derived. I I loved the campus at the very get go. We had such a vivacious staff and support. But we are suffering because we serve such a vital support with the agencies around us, with DWSS, our lockdown, our our corrections, because without us giving the help that our public so deserves, we can't keep them safe and vice versa. So pardon the pun, but it is a crazy circle but we have been working so understaffed and we are failing ill and not feel, and we need the support of S I mean AB 268 just to bring up our morale and feel that we are worthwhile and uh, taking the burden off of our backs and the retention pay will surely help kind of repay back of the economic pressures that the pandemic has hit. I so am grateful for this time to speak. I appreciate, we all appreciate the Lombardo administration and all your honored board members on this meeting. I thank you for this time. Please keep staying safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. You have just joined us and would like to testify in support. Please press star nine or raise your hand in your Zoom window to take your place in the queue. Hi, my name is Jean. I am a state uh, worker. I am in support of AB 268. I am an administrative assistant level three at TMCC. And these bonuses would go a long way. Um, our morale is very low right now. Um, it's hard to feel like we're appreciated. And it would be wonderful if the members of the Senate Finance Committee would support this. We thank you, um, the committee, all the members of the assembly, and also the Lombardo administration for their support. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Hi, uh, good evening. My name is Lorraine Walter. I'm a management analyst three. I've worked for the state for 21 years. I'm a member of AFSCME Local 4041 and a supporter of AB 268. My 13 person agency has three vacancies right now and has not filled the position of my supervisor for the past five months. During this time, I have had to take over many of that position's duties without any corresponding increase in pay. I'm sure that I'm not the only employee faced with this situation, so I am supporting the passage of AB 268. I feel it is a great way for the state to show appreciation for the loyalty of its workers in our service to the citizens of Nevada. I would appreciate your support for AB 268 and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Caller ending in 581, you are unmuted and may begin. Hello, uh, thank you for the time today. My name is Abraham Garcia and I am a state worker in Las Vegas. 
Um, I am in support of a AB 268. Um, I believe that all state employees should um, be included, not only the union members. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Hello, my name is Kevin Seitz, GBC Faculty Senate Chair, as well as Professor of Electrical Systems Technology. Thank you very much for your time. I just wanted to speak on behalf of the faculty and classified staff of Great Basin College and Elko that we use support AB 268, and we would urge this body to support an amendment to include all NCA employees on the state-supported side. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for your consideration. Um, we also appreciate the assembly hearing this bill as well as the Lombardo administration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Caller ending in 785, you are unmuted and may begin. Um, show support for AB 268. The state of Nevada is facing a tremendous understaffing crisis. I don't know one agency that isn't being impacted negatively by the staffing shortage, um, which also transfers to not being able to serve um, our, our um, uh, community as well as uh, we are capable of doing because we are so short staffed, short, so short staffed and um, just um, the budget crunches. Uh, I encourage this um, community to um, fully fund this and, and make this happen for State of Nevada employees so that um, not only do they feel appreciated, but also we can put this money back into the very communities that we live because too many of us are living paycheck to paycheck. Thank you very much. Are there any more callers on the line? Yes, Chair. One moment. Good evening, my name is Amanda Hunt. I'm a rehab technician to, uh, with Dieter. I've been with the state about a year. I am also a member of the ESME Local 4041. I'm in support of the AB 268. And as everyone has said, the state of Nevada faces an enormous understaffing crisis. Um, and these bonuses would go a long way in showing state workers that were appreciated. And I do notice the trend of we get um, really qualified rehab counselors and the next month they're gone. I don't see them again. So there is a trend of people coming and they're not being paid enough and they leave. Um, we thank you, the members of the Senate Finance Committee, as well as members of the Assembly for hearing and supporting this bill. We also thank the Lombardo administration for their support. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Any additional callers in support? If you would like to testify in support of SB 268, please press star nine to take your place in the queue. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Martin Ramirez. I'm calling to testify in support of AB 268. I'm a five year employee with the state of Nevada for the Department of Child Support. Um, as everybody has previously mentioned, we are currently extremely understaffed as one of the largest 
counties here in the state of Nevada, we've seen it skyrocket where we currently have up to eight open positions with no um, end in sight of being able to keep people in our positions. So I'd really appreciate it if the finance committee would approve AB 268. Any additional callers? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can, thank you. Oh, hi, um, I am Leticia Zuniga with the um, Department of Healthcare Financing and Policy in Las Vegas. I am a nurse coordinator and I'm in support of AB 268. Um, Basically, this would really help with, along with paying the bills, but more than that, it would increase the morale um, of any nurses working for the state and in, in any other um, state workers, of course, but in particular of nurses because we, um, they come to work for the state and then they do quick, quickly when they realize that they can get paid um, higher wages, either the private sector or federal or the county. So this would really increase the morale. I've been working for the state for 21 years now and I'm for the great state of Nevada and I just want to feel appreciated and value as a state worker and I appreciate the governor and all of you guys that can make this happen. Thank you for your time and support. Thank you very much. Next caller please. Hi, my name is Sarah Linda Kaiser. I am a senior lecturer at the University of Nevada, Reno. I've taught at UNR for 25 years. This year, we lost two members of our department to out-of-state jobs. It will be difficult to replace them because it's expensive to live in Reno. I wholeheartedly support AB 268 and sincerely hope that you'll be able to include NG professional workers in this bill, as many of us are living paycheck to paycheck or holding more than one job. We serve a vital function for educating our populace for a vibrant future for Nevada. I thank the Finance Committee and the Lombardo Administration for trying to take care of Nevada's workers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Hi, my name is Destiny Long, and I am in support of AB and I would just like to say thank you for your consideration and it would go a long way into making pre, um, workers feel appreciated and also incentivize new workers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller please. Hello. Hi, my name is Hello. Please proceed. Hi, my name is Vanessa Luis. I am with the Division of Healthcare Financing and Policy in the Las Vegas office. I am a proud member of Ask Me Local 4041, and I am in support of AB 268. Um, I would like to thank, to thank you all for your time, and I hope that you guys are able to help us in supporting and passing the bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Hello, my name is Daniel Smith, and I am an administrative faculty at the University of Nevada, Reno. I am calling in support of AB 268. Uh, though I would like to say I'm disappointed in the addition of removing professional staff from this bill. I started with the university seven years ago, and just in the last three years, I've seen my department cut in half. 
um, with all of my coworkers leaving for higher paying jobs in the private sector. Uh, I love my job, but my workload has continued to increase and with uh, inflation considerations, I'm making $200 less a month than when I started. Um, this bill is a great way to show that the sacrifices that uh, state workers make are appreciated and understood, but it's vital that all state employees are recognized under this bill. Thank you so much for your time and consideration in passing AB 268 with all state employees included. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. If there are additional callers to provide testimony in support of AB 268, please press star nine to take your place in the queue. Caller ending in 672, you are unmuted and may begin. Hi, my name is Felicia Bonet, and I am calling in from the Vocational Rehabilitation uh, Division in Southern Las Vegas. I am an internal job developer, and I have been with the state of Nevada for eight years. Um, I am in support of the AB268. Um, as a state worker, we um, show up every day, rain, sleet, or snow, and um, we commit ourselves to the utmost customer service for our clients. Um, it's really hard to do that when we're not even able to live paycheck to paycheck because there's not enough. Um, re in recent times, I have considered to get a second job, which takes away from my family time as well. And so this um, pay increase um, and what um, the government or our legislation is trying to do is imperative to um, not only secure but retain good, valuable state workers and also the morale that goes throughout the state of Nevada. Um, I thank you for the time. I thank you for just the opportunity to be able to speak up about this. Um, my my heart is with the state and I love what I do, but I also love being able to provide for my family. And this is a very, very, very important time um, for us as state workers to be able to retain um, just a, a level of integrity and get people that to work for the state that have integrity and by compensating them financially. So thank you for the time to um, give um, allow my voice to be heard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any additional callers in support before we go to opposition? Chair, there are no additional callers in support at this time. Okay, thank you very much. We'll go to opposition here in Carson City. Kent Irvin. Uh, you thought we'd never get to you, did you? <laughs> Go ahead, please, Mr. Uh, Irvin. Kent Irvin, Nevada Faculty Alliance. The Nevada Faculty Alliance, let me make clear, enthusiastically supports the retention bonuses for our classified colleagues um, and our friends that asked me. Um, but AB 268, in its current form, is inequitable for NG professional staff. So we're here in opposition just because of my our understanding of it, committee protocol to ask for a change to the bill. Uh, I really appreciate the discussion that you all had and hope you all can get in a room, sing Kumbaya, and get out your calculators. <laughs> so, our, you know, it was really arbitrary to remove NC professionals while, re while retaining bonuses for professional employees in the other state agencies, and that made our members feel like we're second-class state employees. Retention issues at NCR are dire with an overall turnover rate of 14% last year. Bonuses would really help. I don't think our testimony is going to be very much different than what you heard in support from a lot of folks. 
people look up NC salaries online and they see the coach and they see surgeons that are part of the med school practice plans who a lot of that money doesn't come from the state anyway, but they get, are misled into believing that that's the norm at NC and at the risk of appearing like Ross Perot, I have a chart uh, and the, you know, for salaries from less than 30,000 to over 200,000, where the vertical axis is the number of employees. The yellow down here are the classified employees. Uh, the median is around 50,000. The blue is our rank and file professional employees. I want to point out that in the 50 or 40 to 60, thousand dollar range there's just as many professional employees as classified employees in that range if you go way out here to over two hundred thousand that's the red bar that's our executive and clinical folks and so and many of them are also not state funded so but some are so you know these folks down here are professional employees that as opposed to classified in the ENSHE system. So who are they? It includes advisors, instructional technology people, library services, student services, program managers, as well as academic faculty. And many of the early career and community college faculty are also down in this big bump. So, uh, you know, we offered the amendment we did to try to capture the idea that Yes, we know there are some very highly paid folks at ENSHE and that with all due respect, the chancellor and the president don't need a $500 uh, retention bonus and so also to pair costs. Our amendment adds back ENSHE professionals on state funding making less than 95%. The differential cost, uh, I can tell you how I calculated that if you want, but you all have experts. Uh, to get to the right number. Uh, so thank you for your consideration. Please fix AB 268, and I'd be happy to answer questions if you have any. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time and expertise, and of course, the chart. Go ahead, please. Thank you, uh, Ian M. Hartshorn, H-A-R-T-S-H-O-R-N for the record. I'm a faculty member at UNR and a member of the NFA, speaking on my own behalf. I urge the committee to vote no on AB 268 as written. State workers desperately need support in the face of rising cost of living, but this bill supports nearly all state workers except faculty. As Dr. Irvin mentioned, misperceptions of faculty abound. Faculty are not the high-paid administrators who many of you regularly interact with, our presidents and provosts and deans, nor are they the regents with whom some in the legislature have political grievance. Faculty are the lecturers teaching right now, this hour, English and civics and accounting in night classes at our community colleges and our universities for $30,000 and $40,000 a year. As a program director, I can't find teachers for my department's vital classes and programs. We are hemorrhaging teachers across the system, not just those with short contracts, but permanent faculty like myself as well. If the wages don't push us out, the sense that excluding us from consideration is a bipartisan effort will. Professional staff, faculty, are frontline workers who taught throughout the pandemic. We were state employees when the furloughs hit. We should be state employees when retention bonuses come. Please vote no on this version of the bill. Please amend, amend it to include all state workers. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Anyone else here in Carson City? We'll go to Las Vegas. Oh, go ahead, please. Turn on your mic, please. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, I was going to say we are now officially doing Senate after dark, I'm pretty sure. So um, introduction, my name is um, Lisa Thomas. I am a faculty member at um, the University of Nevada, Reno School of Nursing. But I want to be clear, I'm speaking on behalf of myself as a private citizen. Um, I have been at the UNR for 18 years in my current role. And um, I've been, and so forgive my stream of consciousness because I've been jotting to be sure I didn't overlap what other people have said. But I want to address just a couple of things. A, I, 
I, we, everybody I know, wholeheartedly supports the intent of AB 268. However, I signed in in opposition because of the provision that removes um, professional staff and faculty from that. Um, there is, it seems a little bit, and I listened to the Assembly Ways and Means um, hearing, it seems that there's a perception that faculty make a lot of money. And uh, looking in Transparent Nevada, of the 5,000 faculty list, or 5,000 employees listed, less than 500 of them make more than 100,000. Um, just by a comparison, and of them, mostly are School of Medicine, and um, Ken, Ken already talked about this, or have dean, director, or full professor in their title, which means they've been at the school for at least 15 years. Um, the reason that I continue and I work at UNR is I love what I do, I love teaching. I could make a whole lot of money, a whole lot more money somewhere else by comparison. Um, my youngest daughter is an associate degree prepared nurse and works at Renown and makes 75,000 a year. We hire master's prepared faculty at 74,000 per year. So just perspective in number. Um, the other thing that I just want to address, and I'll be quick, I know I'm short on time. But the other thing I want to address is also salary over time. And I really appreciate the comment that we were state workers when we had furloughs, we're still state workers. But I want to take it back a little bit further. So back to when all the bodies are buried back in the 2009 financial crisis. From 2009 to 2014, all faculty at the, at the um, at the NANSHE state workers worked with somewhere between six and 12 days of furlough and or salary cuts during that entire five year period. So that has, for those of us who have stayed with the university, that has um, impacted our salary even going forward. So the cost of living is up over the past 10 years. Um, the latest number is about 39%. But our salaries have remained flat. Um, so with that, I encourage you to please um, pass the original version of AB 268 and um, to reject the um, amendment that was adopted by Assembly Ways and Means. Thank you very much, and thank you for what you do. Thank you. See no more opposition here in Carson City. We'll go down to Las Vegas. Go ahead, please, when you're ready. Hi, my name is Tracy Sherman, and I am the Faculty Senate Chair at the College of Southern Nevada. I've been with the Nevada System of Higher Education for 25 years through thick and thin. I support everything about AB 268 except the ENCHI carve-out. Thank you very much for recognizing our hardworking classified staff. They really are amazing. But eliminating professional staff does not make us feel valued. The system of higher education is the economic engine of Nevada. We can solve nearly all of the state's problems, but only if we can recruit and retain the best possible employees. We respectfully ask that our professional staff not be left out of any retention efforts. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. Um, go ahead, Dr. Unger. Doug Unger, D-O-U-G, U-N-G-E-R, UNLV Chapter President, Nevada Faculty Alliance. And thank you, Chair Dondero Loop and Vice Chair Canazaro and all on this committee and uh, Chief of Staff Key Keffer and uh, uh, Ms. Stevenson and the Governor and the Acting Chancellor for the good discussion that you had about amending AB 268, which the Nevada Faculty Alliance must oppose in order to follow protocol to suggest an amendment to AB 268 to restore Nevada faculty and uh, professional employees in higher education. I'd just like to share a few facts that should augment uh, Dr. Irvin's. Uh, our salaries are currently 16 to 21 percent below national averages, depending on which group of university employees all over the country one compares them to, and that's before calculating to inflation. So they're even more out of kilter with national averages. We do have a 14 to 15 percent uh, turnover rate, which is twice what it was seven years ago, um, and it's getting worse. But more shockingly, the NFA survey, which had a close to a 40 percent response rate, the largest response rate we've ever had system-wide, 
showed that more than half of our faculty are thinking of leaving because of low salaries. That was a shock to me to see, and uh, it should be a shock to all our administrators and to this legislature. Retention bonuses will help, especially our junior faculty and our administrative faculty, if they can be restored with an amendment. The math is close. Um, thank you for looking at the Nevada Faculty Alliance Amendment, which we think is you know, quite fair. Um, and I hope you all can get together and amend AB 268, which unfortunately we must oppose, though we support these retention bonuses for all state employees. Just hope we can be included. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there, I think there's somebody else, at, nobody else at the table there? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, um, seeing no more um, opposition testimony in Las Vegas, we'll go to the phone lines. If you would like to testify in opposition to AB 268, please press star nine to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers choosing to testify at this time. Thank you very much. We'll go to neutral here in Carson City. Seeing none, we'll go to Las Vegas. I don't believe we have any. We'll go to the phone lines in neutral. If you would like to testify in neutral for AB 268, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers choosing to testify at this time. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, committee members, I believe that completes our business for the evening. Um, thank you for joining us in Finance After Dark. Public now, oh, public comment. I'm sorry. Got ahead of myself. Public comment here in Carson City. Public comment in Las Vegas. Any public comment on the phone? If you would like to provide public comment, please press star nine to take your place in the queue. Chair, the lines are open and working, but there are no callers for public comment at this time. Thank you very much. Now I can thank you for joining Finance After Dark because I know it is dark now. So thank you very much for joining us and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.